So, picture the scene. You're driving down the road in your little one liter EcoBoost Fiesta or little EcoBoost Focus, whatever it is you're driving. And uh, you see this light come on the dash. Oh no. And you think to yourself, my engine sounds a little bit rattly. I better turn it off. That is the best thing you can do, shut it off. So, if you have one of these engines in your cars, which is this, the little three pot or three cylinder, EcoBoost engine, these suffer terribly with all pumps getting blocked up. Um, so this one's had exactly the same problem. They were driving it along, the light come on, it sounded a bit rattly. They parked it up, they've left it parked up for absolutely ages, uh, hence why it's got a flat battery and I've got the booster pack on it. And uh, now they want it fixed, so that's what I'm doing. Um, it's not gonna be anything else. I've been down the road with one of these before, it's checking oil pressure and switches and stuff like that. It ain't, it's always the strainer in the oil pump that's blocked up. Um, and the actual strainer is built into the oil pump, so you can strip them off and spend ages cleaning them, but for what it's worth, I'm just gonna replace the oil pump. So right, let's crack on. So first things first, we start up here. I'm gonna take this shield off. There's a couple of little eight mil bolts here, 10 mil bolt round here, and I know the Lambert sensor gets in the way of the bottom shield, but we will cover that in a minute. Sweet. Lucky it hit the floor, innit? It's 10 mil. Right, I'm not gonna show you undoing every little bolt, but this is what we're taking off next. I'm stripping this off. So I actually ended up taking the Lambert sensor out and um, this shield was actually all part of one. Uh, I managed to do it all from up here. You've just got a little bolt in the side there, little bolt in the top there, one there, one there, and one right down low. You can get to everything from up here. Um, so now that's off, I'm gonna be undoing these bolts. The reason why I'm stripping all this off, by the way, is that this cat, um, it, it all goes down and under the sump. And if you leave this here, you've got no room to get the sump pan off. So um, we need to strip this off. So there's a couple of bolts here, and from memory, I think there's some buried brackets down the back here, but we might do them from underneath. But I'm gonna strip these off for the minute and see how we go. Oh, and I ended up taking the Lambert sensor out as well. You don't have to unplug it, you can just backwind it. So, have the Fiesta up in the air now. It's got the standard oil leak from the top of the engine. They all seem to have all of a sudden. Um, I'm gonna undo these two bolts here on this bracket to lower this down. I'm gonna pop this off of its mount, just give the exhaust a bit more wiggle. Uh, yeah, just them. And then there's another little bracket bolt just up there behind the aircon pump. I should be able to get on with a bit of an extension. I'm gonna leave this one in for now, this Lambert sensor. I don't think it'll get in my way from memory. I'm gonna pull that down. Once I've took that down, I'm gonna take the auxiliary belt off because I need to remove the air conditioning pump because that's bolted to the front of the sump. So the pump needs to come off, obviously, because the sump's coming off. So yeah, oh, and I'm gonna drain the engine oil, obviously, that's what I'm gonna do now. So I won't bore you, I will just start doing that and I'll uh, be back in a split second. Let's crack on. So, taking the auxiliary belt off, you just spring the tensioner back up there and you can just slide the belt off. Aircon pump, just three bolts. One tucked in there, that kind of has to come off with the pump, so you sort of leave the pump away as you undo it. One there and one up the top, so just three bolts. And then I've just bungee corded it forward, double bungee cord, no mucking about. Um, pulled that forward there, just for a bit more room. I'm just gonna unplug all the little brackets and stuff like that, and then um, I can get my arm up here a bit easier in there as well. And there is a bolt, let me show you. There, next to the cat that you need to undo. So if you undo that, and then these, I should be able to pull that forward and wiggle it down a bit. So yeah, I'm gonna do that now. So I just remembered this little heat shield is actually bolted to the back of the cat. So I took them bolts off down the bottom and that little one in the bracket and it all wobbles now, but it wobbles with this heat shield. So you've got to undo this 10 mil and down there, a little another 10 mil just in here. I've got the luxury of an electric ratchet. That one's gonna need an extension, yeah. So hopefully, once this is off, oh, can't give me a hand around there. Magnet on a stick, mechanic's best friend. One, two, so now, this will come off, he says. Let's crack on. Right, so the exhaust is all hanging down now, so that should just give me enough room to sort of tuck the pan out. Um, now I've got to undo these little 30mm bolts that go through the side of the sump 
into the gearbox and then there's some little bolts here and here they're sort of hidden there's a few up there and then there's just loads of eight mils all the way around the sump that i need to take off and i can't remember if i've taken that dry shaft bracket off or not i can't remember i don't think i do i'll leave it on for now and if i get stuck then i'll take it off uh yeah mind your head on this all dripping if you get a chance if you know if the job allows get it in the night before and then take the sump plug out and unscrew the oil filter and um leave it draining overnight because obviously you'll see later when i'm trying to put the pan on because i haven't had it draining overnight there's always going to be a little bit of oil running down the inside of the block so um but it should be fine anyway right let's undo these bolts and i'll crack on um so i've got all the bolts out of the sump let me show you and for what it was worth i took that dry shaft bracket off because i just didn't look like the way it was looking it's down on the floor now um gives me a bit more room oh by the way obviously when you get all the bolts out um don't worry about the sump falling off and like hitting you on the head because it won't happen um because these sumps don't actually have a gasket they've just got a smear of sealant and um, the sealant acts as like a really strong glue so um yeah now all the bolts are out it's still there from memory there's a little indent around the front here like a little gap up here that you can get like a screwdriver in and basically what you need to do is just start wiggling it up and down back and forth and eventually you'll hear the sealant start to break and start to give and when it does give the sump will start coming off and then you just work your way around um so yeah i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna film it because it might take me one minute it might take me 10 minutes but just keep going at it and eventually it will come off obviously make sure 100 that you've got all the bolts off um because obviously you stand no chance if you miss one and yeah so it should come on off all right let's crack on So uh, maybe, just maybe, I should have kept filming because it actually come off really quick. But I got the pan off, and if you look down here, you will see it's very glittery in this sump. Loads of little bits, of, probably the camera don't pick up on them, but there's loads of little bits of uh, what I'm going to say. I guess that is bearing, but the sump absolutely stinks of petrol. Um, so I don't know if it's bore washed or it's got a dodgy injector or what, but I'm just going to put an oil pump in it and hope for the best. So this is the actual oil pump itself, and this is what we're changing. Um, it's driven by a little belt off of the crankshaft, as you can see. These are a wet belt engine, so they've got one timing belt that goes up there to the cams, and then they've got another little belt here. Um, I'm not going to change that belt, because to change that belt I'll have to strip all the front belt off. and. I ain't doing that because that doesn't look like a, the most healthiest engine now because it's been driven for too long. This is the strain I was talking about. And if you look in there, you can just see it's all clogged up with crap. I'll tell you what, let me try and dig some out. And uh, I will show you. Let's get, what have we got? Yeah, oh, look at that little flatted screwdriver. And there we go. Yeah, come on, let go. And that's the goop that comes out of them. This looks like bits of rubber, so I don't know whether if you use incorrect oil, the belt breaks up, then it ends up getting sucked into the oil pump. Like I said, you can spend ages cleaning all that out, but for what it's worth, I'm just gonna change the pump. So yeah, let me get the pump off and uh, we can crack on. So, so the oil pump, uh, it's a little plastic cover that unclips. I've already taken that off. You just sort of lever the sides out with your hands. You don't need no tools and it unpops. And then the oil pump comes off quite easy, just three bolts. One there, one there, and one at the back there. And then that whole thing comes off. So I'm gonna do that now. Yeah, exciting stuff. The actual oil feed from the pump into the engine is through a little internal drilling there. You'll see it better when I've got the pump off. So once these are off, you can just uh, pull it down, I'll show you. Right, let's do that. So that's the oil pump off. Whoops, you can see all the gunk in there. My experience, by the time you've cleared all that out as well, 
you might as well strip all the actual pump down and clean the insides out because it does get through that. Um, be warned when you undo this bolt. Oh, that's where the oil comes out of, by the way, and into the engine. That's like a little internal drill in there. It's no gasket. It's just metal to metal, so make sure it's clinically clean before you put the new pump on. Um, so yeah, that's an EcoBoost oil pump. Now, what to do next is take a little scraper and you have to spend what feels like the rest of eternity going around the bottom of the sump, scraping off as much as the old sealant as you can. And once you've scraped all this off, you then need to get a, a little bit of sandpaper, clean the rest of it off. But as you can see, there's constantly oil running down the inside of the engine off the baffle plate. So what I do is scrape as much of this off as I can, leave it, give it a blast with a bit of brake cleaner, and then I'll clean the sump up. And then um, while I'm drying that, I'll give it a bit more brake cleaner and a wipe and just keep going back to it until oil basically stops running off it. So yeah, I'm gonna keep scraping. I will crack on. I'll talk to you in a bit. Right, bye. So I've been cracking on, clean the sump up. I just use like a, like a, an engine degreaser, you sort of spray it on, scrub it in with a brush and then just jet wash it off. Inside's pretty clinically clean. Outside, not so much. Just clean, clean enough. Clean enough for a one litre Eco Boost Fiesta anyway. Um, new oil pump, bolted that up. Just cleaned up all the little face where it all sits and stuff. And then you just obviously bolt it on with the three bolts. Still need to clip the cover back on. No tension on this belt. It just sort of hooks over, so you just hook it in and unhook it, and that's pretty much that, to be fair. Um, I've cleaned up as best as I can around the edge. Might give it a bit more. It's still oil running down, as you can see, so I'm gonna have to give that another clean. And then uh, once the cover's on, smear a load of sealant on. Genuine Ford oil pump, by the way. Uh, there you go. Ford, if you can see that. Um, I don't know if they make a pattern one. I haven't tried asking, but these are fairly priced anyway. So yeah, right. There you go, sump's all on, sealant's all smudging out. I'm gonna obviously leave it overnight to dry before I um, put oil in it, a good 10 hours minimum. Uh, nipped all the bolts up, still need to put these little bell housing bolts back in and stuff. And basically do everything I've just done in reverse. Yeah. Right, so I'm just putting some of the um, up top stuff back together. Um, I've just put the, the four bolts in for the cat and stuff like that. Uh, annoyingly, one of the little studs here, um, when I took the nut off, I didn't realise, but it actually picked up on the thread. So the nut was pretty toast, as you can see, it's all chewed to shit. So um, I tried putting a new nut on, but it wouldn't go over the head of the thread. So I was like, no bother, I'll change the stud. Started winding the stud out, and obviously I was working it out slowly, because they've got a little like torx bit at the top there you can work them out with. And uh, that snapped off, so I was like, no bother. So I grabbed the actual chamfer of the bolt with the pair of mole grips, and it locked solid in the uh, back of the um, turbo there, so I couldn't get that in or out. So what I ended up doing was chopping the head of it off, and um, I just cleaned it up with a, a tap as best as I could, and then I just put like a normal nut on there and tied it right up. Annoying, but these are the things that you don't take into account. This is like the fourth or fifth one of these oil pumps I've changed and they've always come off absolutely no problems whatsoever. And now obviously you expect every job to go exactly the same as the last one you've done. And now doing this one, I've stumbled across that. So I started at five, it's now eight o'clock. Um, so I'm three hours in, but I'm getting there. So now I've got over that little hurdle. I can start putting the rest of the bolts, of the, you know, the bracket at the bottom, the, the heat shields and the lamber sensor and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, so I've got to put the aircon pump on as well. But yeah, right. Anyway, let's crack on. Uh, oh, excuse me. So, uh, cap's all back on. Still got to put that heat shield on. Um, bolt the aircon pump on. Tighten all that up. Put the auxiliary belt on. Put all the cover back on. Um, yeah, get in there slowly. Just tighten everything up. Just sort of like double checking everything. Drive shaft bracket, I've done that. Yeah, I think it's just that shield and uh, the lamber sensor. Oh, inner arch. Let me put the inner arch back in. Cool. Lambda sensor back in, heat shields on, all back together. All I need to do is change the oil filter. Um, I'll do that in the morning, so I can't be bothered at the moment. And then um, put some fresh oil in it. Oh, better put the sun plug back in as well. And then hopefully be good to go. Yeah. I'll check it in the morning. It is the next morning. I have put oil in it. I have changed the oil filter. 
The battery is extremely flat and I forgot to put it on charge. So I have the booster pack on. Clutch down. Turn that off. Ready? Oh, hello. No more pressure light. Still got engine light though, and a battery light. That might explain, might explain why the uh, battery was flat in the first place. So uh, yeah, let's plug it in and try and work out why all these lights are on, shall we? Cool, that'll do for this video. I hope you liked it. Like, share, subscribe. Cheers guys, bye.